Hello everyone, this is Mark Preco, President and Founder of Atom Software, and it's my pleasure today to demonstrate to you the Atom Software Updates Winter 2021. Everyone should have an outline in front of them, and if you do not, you should go to your Atom Software, go to your help link, and then select Atom Updates, and that's where you can find the latest outline to follow along with us. Let me go back to my outline here. So to begin, page one, under miscellaneous, we have security updates. So two-factor authentication, you can use that both as a user for user logging in or the client where they would come in through the client portal. And you turn that on or turn that off, that's up to you. You can set that up in admin. You can set the number of days um, so if you want to do it every 90 days, every 30 days, or every single day, you can do that. Or if you don't want to use it at all, you don't have to use it at all. So when you received the updates in the software, it will be turned off. So you'd have to turn it on here through admin. And what the screenshots look like, real quick. So they would have the option, whoever's logging in, to get the code either by a phone call, text message, or email. So whatever's on record. And then the next page here, it'll say enter your authentication code. So if you received a text or a phone call or an email, take the code, put it in. Um, I'm sure most of you guys have already had experience with that. Uh, we just thought that was a good thing to have to uh, protect yourselves. Uh, next, the last four of the social security number. Uh, for our access code, which normally has a social security number in it. Um, so just in case someone were to get into your software through your username, um, logging in themselves, um, instead of having them have access to all these socials in high volume areas, as we call it. So these areas where they always displayed the full social, your search results, your office event pages, many reports, now it's only going to display the last four so that's for your protection just in case something were to happen and someone tried to actually take your client data a large volume of it um, where socials used to display now it's only going to display the last four so there will be some protection there if you do need a report with all the full social on it just contact adam support and we will we will provide that report for you and then send it to you through a secure means but shouldn't be a problem, and this gives you more protection um, just in case something did happen. Uh, document storage. So we've always used uh, Liquid Web, who is still hosting our servers. It's just now they're not hosting our uploaded documents anymore. Um, we went to a more secure uh, provider with Amazon S3. So many of you probably have heard of that. So they're the leader in the industry. Um, and if you recall last year, we did have a little bit of an issue where the software was running slower. And the main reason was because of our uploads weren't syncing properly. So that's when we decided to look elsewhere outside of Liquid Web, our current data hoster, hosting company, and went with Amazon and everything's been working great. And we anticipate it to work great during tax season. Um, there's some great things about it by moving to Amazon. Um, one is, your documents are backed up and stored at three different sites. So if one site were to go down, it doesn't make a difference because it's on the other site. So it's all synced up properly. Um, the backup is 14 days, which is the same thing we had with Liquid Web. So if you call us up and said, oh, I deleted a document a year ago, um, that document would no longer be in there because we just do a 14 day backup. It'd be impossible to do it for the full, it'd be very costly um, or there'd be an extra cost. So, but with Amazon, they have a feature called versioning, which if you were to delete a document, um, it will go into like a delete trash can and it'll always be available if you choose to. So that's, if you want us to turn that on, um, there is an additional fee for that. It's uh, $100 per 100 gigabytes of storage. So you guys would have to contact us until we then would find out how much storage um, you're utilizing right now. 
majority of you are under the 100 gigabytes. So for the most part, it'd be $100 if you want this. It's kind of like an insurance policy that you always have protection just in case somebody deleted a document. We would be able to always go back and retrieve that deleted document for you. So if you're interested, contact our Adam support team. So um, with Amazon also, uh, unfortunately the upload size, I don't know if you guys were even aware of this, but when you uploaded a document, say an account uploads page to the far right, it actually showed the size of that uploaded document. We're not able to display that anymore. So for your permanent uploads, account uploads, and the clean uploads, which is on the admin page, the upload size will no longer display. So again, if you need to find out how much total storage you have uh, with Amazon right now, just contact us and then we can give you that information. Um, and lastly, for the security, we just updated the software application to Microsoft.NET Framework, which is the latest out there, and it's just to keep everything more secure. All right, moving on to page two. Uh, this was a big change, okay, big enhancement. Um, we've been using the VOIP phone system with Adam, so we went ahead, a lot of you guys are very aware of um, what VoIP phones are, obviously you can use a phone from anywhere with internet access. So the the main reason we did this is because of with COVID, we needed to have people working remote. So uh, we didn't have, our phone system currently didn't allow us to do that. So we were using our cell phone, which isn't the best way to do it as you guys know. So instead of buying a VoIP phone system, which many of you guys probably did because that was what the need was because you had to work remotely, we went ahead and just held off a little bit longer and then we built it inside of Atom Software. So Atom Software now is our phone system. Not a separate application, Atom Software is our phone system, just like it's your management system, okay? And it's pretty awesome. So I did a video on how the phone system works, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. I'll point out some of the highlights as I go through other changes. Um, displaying some of the features that the software or the phone system does. So real quick here, big point is caller lookup. Uh, this is gonna save tons of time. So when the clients call in, because we have their phone numbers already in Adam, it's gonna automatically pull their name up. And so you know who you're talking to um, before you even answer the phone. So it's just like caller ID, which you probably would say, well, I got caller ID, big deal. Well, the big deal is then you just click on their name and you're in their file. So I don't have to ask them how to spell their name and do a lookup. It's automatic. All I'm doing is clicking and I'm in their file. So I'm not doing any searching anymore. That's huge. Um, skipping down call tracking. And we'll demonstrate how this works too in the software because when we go inside of it, I'll show you where we're keeping the log. So it's going to track your employees, how many calls they're they're making and you know receiving calls, so you can see who's you know who's staying the busiest, who's taking all the calls, how much time they're spending on the phone, and also with your clients, how many times your clients call you, you can track that. It's all in their file. Um, by day, you can find out when you're the busiest during the day, the type of calls you can have it. So you want to see. Um, select one for refund status, like two for scheduling appointment and whatnot. Um, call queue, this is gonna take care of um, when you get all those calls all at the same time, um, which happens obviously depends on your tax business when you get the busiest, but you know when the phone's ringing off the hook. So they go into a queue and then your employees can you know, take care of them as they free up from their other calls, but you don't lose the call. You never lose a call. It's always gonna go into the queue if you can't handle it at the time. Uh, integrated, so a lot, how we're able to actually offer this service and put it into Adam is we're using Twilio, which many of you guys know what Twilio is. That's how you're doing texting. Um, the texting feature that's provided in Adam, it's integrated with Twilio. So they also have voice. And so we just built that using Twilio, that's how we're providing that. So if you already have a Twilio account, if you're interested in using Adam's VoIP phone system, um, it's very simple because it's just an add-on into the account. 
Um, you can use the same phone number if you want, or your current phone number. It, it doesn't make a difference. Um, intercom, you can intercom your, your staff members. Uh, outgoing calls, there's no dialing anymore. Now, if, you're, if it's a client, you just click on their phone number and it automatically dials out for you. So it's just gonna speed up the whole process, provide better customer service because you can get answers so fast um, and tracks everything. Uh, how it works with, I talked to a lot of you people um, regarding the current system you guys are using now and it, you know they bill based on calls. I know they bill based on how many lines you have and uh, you may not want to add extra lines because it's extra cost. Well, with the way this is built, there there's one line, there's one phone number, whatever phone number you want it to be, and it can handle unlimited incoming calls and outgoing calls. So it's all billed based on how many calls, or no, it's billed, billed, I'm sorry, minutes per call. So if you don't make any calls in a day, you don't even get charged for that day. So it's all based on the volume. Um, there is a one-time charge to start this going, it's $4.99. And then after that, it's all run through your Twilio account. And it's, so it just charges on your card, just like it currently is for your texting. So it's very inexpensive, I can tell you that. So what I was paying, now I didn't have a, a VoIP phone system like many of you do. I had just the traditional phone lines, but this is saving me 70% off my phone bill from what I was paying before. So the service or what this is providing with Adam is huge. And then also on top of that, I'm actually saving money. Soft phones, what that is, that is a, using a headset as opposed to using your traditional desk phone. So this is built without a desk phone. So it is a headset. You do have to use a headset or you can use a laptop with a mic and a speaker, or you can use your cell phone with a mic and a speaker. So if you can pull Adam up on your cell phone, you can actually make calls through Adam on your cell phone. So that is how it was designed. It, you cannot use desk phones if you wanna use our VoIP phone system. Here's the demo. Click on the demo, watch it 15 minutes. I, I demonstrate how it works. Um, and you can compare to what you have now. And I can almost 99.9% .9 guarantee you it's better than what you're using now just because it's inside of your management system, Adam. If you're interested in, I know we don't have a whole lot of time with us being in December right now, but if you're interested, just call our support team. And if you have a Twilio account, it's even simpler to get you set up. But uh, the process is very simple and I kind of go over that, how we did it, how we were forced to use the phone system um, in my demo. All right, getting on to lobby management. All right, we're out of the phone system, now back to the normal updates. Check-in, so the curbside check-in, I'm not sure if many of you guys used this last year, so uh, it was strictly like mobile, tied to your phone when they checked in. Now it actually can be desktop also. And the reason we did that is because uh, with the curbside check-in, that's the name of it, you don't have to actually be in the curb on your at the curb to do it. I mean, because now it's a desktop version, but you're able to answer um, a couple questions or ask a couple questions and then gather that information and then it automatically is stored in the client file. So you can customize what you want to say for a question. So in this case, we have which office and where are you waiting inside the office outside the office you could put down you could customize it to say you know why are you here you know what kind of service would you like us to do for you whatever you want but this check-in allows you to ask a couple questions so you might want to use this as opposed to the other check-in so that's that's up to you but it is desktop along with mobile now and this is the url code right here with the check-in too and we have that set up for you in the help menu inside of Adam. Uh, user notifications upon check-in. So when the clients check in, if it's a requested appointment or a requested walk-in, um, before it wasn't displaying in the upper right-hand corner. Here, I'm gonna start moving over, I think, to, I'm gonna minimize this and actually show Adam now. So the, the check-in was up here in the upper right-hand corner. I would notify you or that requested user that your appointment's here. It wasn't doing it for all business types. It was only doing it for um, 
basically tax preparation. So now it'll be all business types. So if someone comes in for bookkeeping and it's requested appointment for someone, it'll display right here. Also, we can have that. Um, so it'll be text. It'll send a text directly to the person. Let me pull this back up real quick here. Oops, I'm sorry. So just in case they're not refreshing their screen and they don't see an upper right, rank, upper right hand corner, they also can have a text sent directly to them. So typically people have that, they have that on their phone. Um, I mean, they have the phone with them more than they might have Adam up. Okay, I'm just gonna follow here. I'm on page three, I kind of lost my track here. All right, moving on to page four. I'll minimize this again. Now I got it in front of me. Client portal, so get a copy of my invoice and receipt. Let me move this, close this out. So I'm gonna pull this over here. Okay, so this is a client portal. So now we have credit card processing fee you can charge to your client. So as you know, when you guys go out and charge with credit cards, a lot of, a lot of vendors, um, are actually charging, passing that fee on to you. So now you can do that if you'd like, you can turn that on and, and add them. Um, and you can do it through the client portal and also inside the client file, which I'll demonstrate in a, a little while. So how it works is under make, make a payment here. And if I click pay with credit card, so it automatically, I have it set and you set this up in admin, you can control it. Um, if you want it to be 3%, that's what I'd put 3%. So it says credit card processing fee, $3, and the total is 103. Okay, if I were to click on another for a different amount, that again, that's 3%. So when they go ahead and pay this, and then when it gets automatically recorded in Adam, it actually will have two separate, it'll have the uh, record another transaction line showing the credit card processing fee, and then the total payment. Um, so again, you can set that up if you choose. Uh, next, get a copy of my tax return and documents. We had some users that the, the clients were putting so many documents in here, it was almost timing out the page. So now we just added paging, that's what that means. So if you exceed 250 records per page, it'll then wrap like to a second page, just so it's more manageable. Um, I mean, 250 is a lot to begin with, but anyway, and you can filter these too. So they can, it's, you know, by year and then by um, account upload too. So they can filter it so you don't have to see all 250 if you don't like to. Uh, E-signature, uh, right here, we broke this out. So instead of having just one box for both spouse and taxpayer or client, now it's two separate pop-up boxes. So if I hit client, E-sign required, I just have the one box and then I would, you know, if I want to have the spouse, I click here and that would be the spouse. So two separate boxes. It was, I guess, causing some confusion. Um, birth date field. Obviously that's been a lot of confusion. So we're trying to make this better and we, we feel like we did. Um, so now they can enter dashes or forward slashes. So it has to be, it can be either one, it'll be acceptable, but they do have to put a dash in there. So, and you can put some instructions up here too. That's, you know, that's been there for years. You can customize the instructions to however you want it to read. Um, zip code field. So they are just gonna have to enter, it's, the, it's gonna match up with the first five characters in the zip code fields. Cause what we found out was some people had spaces after the first five characters in the zip code and you can't actually see a space but it was actually inside the client file and so then it wasn't the client wasn't able to match up and it was very difficult to figure out what the problem was but there actually were like hidden spaces so now it's just going to zero in on the first five characters of the zip code so we're hoping this simplifies it and cuts out on um unneeded calls to your office saying I can't e-sign. All right, let me cancel this. Uh, login, log out here. We try to make this easier for the client also. So uh, need a password or forgot a password. If we select this, 
um, they go ahead and send an email. It was it was saying that it was going to send a text to, but if you're not using Twilio for texting with Adam, then obviously the client's not going to get a text. So now it's just going to say it'll send a notification. So depending on, it'll be either an email and text or just an email, depending on um, what you're using Adam for. For if you're not using it for texting, then they won't receive a text. Obviously, the email field label change. Let me get back to login. Now, if they select email, it's going to say primary contacts email. So before, all it did is say email. So obviously, if you have a taxpayer and a spouse, and the spouse is trying to log in, they're going to enter their email. But it really wants the primary's email. That has to match. Um, and just if you didn't know, when I select ID, primary social security number, you can control that this for the ID, you can control that in admin under the company page, what displays here. So, and we just actually made this change recently in our tax office to primary, as opposed to it just said, um, please enter your social security number. So I didn't even realize that was an issue, but again, if the spouse is logging in, they're gonna probably enter their social and not the primaries. Anyway, just trying to simplify things to make it easier so your clients can get in. And the bottom line is so they don't <clears throat> call you to get you involved because you have enough going on. All right, now on to page five, the home page. So I think I'm done with this. I'm gonna close this out. So summary links added top of the page. That's what's on page five of the outline. These are what I'm referring to, the summary links. So we added a new one called call summary. Obviously this won't display if you're not using Adam um, for your phone system. But I just want to point it out. So when I click on, and I actually am going to go to this database to show you something on that. So home page, call summary, and I'm going to go back a couple of days to give you some data. So this is what the call summary is. It's going to track um, who's taking the incoming calls or making outgoing calls. So in this case, you can see, um, and I had four. So four calls, they were all four outbound. I can see the duration. Um, if I click on it, it's gonna show me who I made the calls to, IRS practitioner, um, only nine minutes, that's surprising. Um, I can click on the client, I shoot right into their file if I'd like. So again, with putting everything in one place, that's what Adam's all about, you can quickly link everywhere. So that's why I strongly recommend if you're using a phone system, you might as, if you're using Adam and you love Adam, you might as well put your phone system in there too, because it's gonna make your life easier. So it also tracks the hourly, how many calls you get per hour. So that'll be good for staffing in the future. Call types, as I pointed out, you can identify what you wanna keep track of. If you want your client or your, as they call in to press different numbers, you can see why they're calling. And of course, this is all your clients right here. And then it says how many times they've called. This is all for the day. You can put whatever date range you want. So that is our call summary. Uh, communication summary. So a new link over here, communication summary. So why I decided to track this, um, the main reason is um, now with COVID, I don't know if this, you guys experienced this in your office or not, but Clients are using the portal more and more, all right? And if you're using texting, they're texting us more and more and they're emailing us more and more. So this becomes uh, almost a full-time job right here managing this section. And I'm gonna talk about this in a few minutes, like how I change this up. But just managing all that incoming communication, okay? Obviously phones are important, but as we started having other means of communication, email, text, portal, well, those are important too. So I want to keep track of who is taking care of all those tasks. And I never could do that before. Now I can. So that's what my communication summary is. And I'm going to go back here to get some more data. So this is going to track who's handling my calls, who's handling my emails, my even I threw events in there too, like office events, my SMS, my texting, um, my portal, and my prospect portal. So usually it's going to be my support staff other than my events. Um, but say I got one person who's handling all those incoming calls 
And then they look at another employee and say, well, how come that person's not taking any calls? Well, and the other person says, I'm busy managing the homepage because I got all these texts coming in, all these portals. Well, last year I had no clue what they're, I'm just trusting them that they're handling the homepage and I had no clue what they're doing. So now I can actually see that. So this is gonna track. So if I look at say, um, Kira here, she had 31. So she's the highest, you know, tasks recorded for the day and I can see them all right here. These are the clients, I can sort it. So I can see these are all the, she took some calls, she took some emails, she did some portal messages and then she completed them or she assigned them um, or she replied or composed. So it's just, it's basically just tracking all your communications um, going on in your office and, and who's taking care of what. And also you can do it again, just like the call summary by hour and then by client too, tracking everything that's going on. Um, okay, that's our communication summary. Users, I'm gonna flip back to my sales one. Users, we added a link here. This is just a quick link to the admin users page, which is right here, no big deal. The only reason we did this is because we added call status. So I wanna see who's on a call, transfer only, who's unavailable, who's available. And I'm not gonna get into details what those mean, that, that's in the video. But that's basically all that is a quick link to this page, just so you can see if no one's available to take a phone call, then guess what? It's going, it's gonna to go to the message saying that you're closed or whatever message you guys customize on there. So you wanna make sure someone's always available to take a phone call so you don't miss those calls. Um, get back to my home page. Office events filter, that is right here. What I mean by that, and all we did is we moved, business type was right here. We moved it over to the left. And the reason we did that is because it seemed to make more sense because these are filtering the office events. So if I'm in tax prep, this is my flow. If I switch it over to Adam Payroll, this is my flow. So instead of moving to the center, that's, it just seemed like it made more sense. So it's gonna throw you guys off for maybe a week, okay, because you're used to going over here, but when you think about it, it does make more sense. So the site is right here, which you don't flip as much, and, it, um, and most of you actually don't have more than one site. So um, that's why we did that change. Over here, we just made this more clear as to what this date is. This is the actual start date. And if you know start date is what triggers the clients to display in the office events. So that's what this is all about. And we just clarified that a little bit better. Um, office events, awaiting IRS acknowledgements. Let's come down to that one here. And all we did here is made this a button. So we had a link here. Um, this is for your Drake and Crosslink users. So it was a way of importing, you know, the, the contact and EF data. So we just changed the name and we changed it a button to make it stand out better. So it's now called global import and global import just means it's going to, it's going to pull that import data for all your clients, not just an individual client. Daily log. I'm going to switch back here down to my daily log and I'm gonna move it over to the seventh. And again, I hate to keep pointing out call, you know, related to the our VoIP phone system, but a lot of the changes we made were related to that. Okay, I mean, we made a lot of changes on top of that too for those that aren't gonna sign up because I know not everyone's gonna sign up. But anyway, this is the calls. So inbound, outbound, I can get a snapshot for the day of what took place in the office real quick. And of course, if I click on call link, I sweep right back into my call summary and I can get more detail as to what those calls are. Um, that's the daily paging. Um, we added, again, just to try to manage all these records, every office event now, um, if you have more than 250 records per page, it'll then just keep adding additional pages if you have multiple records. So normally you may not have more than 250 records unless say in the lobby, you aren't moving them out of the lobby, you're checking the clients in and then they stay in the lobby or in check-in here and you don't properly move them out, that page can get overwhelming. 
and sometimes it would time out because you have so many records in there. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So um, it'll manage it based on 250 per page. Okay, moving on to page six. New office event columns. And I think I'm gonna go um, right here. So we added account received wait time minutes. So obviously uh, there's a lot of minutes here for these each one of these clients. So it's just kind of, if you wanna keep track as, as that client checks in and you wanna keep track of how long they've been in each one of those events um, since the date it was received, you know, you can either do it in minutes or you can do it in days. So days was always there, but then we had some people that asked they needed it for minutes. So now you can turn that on if you want. And again, that's all done in admin. Appointment notes, uh, right here are your appointment notes, column for that. Check-in notes over here, as I described, you know, the new curbside check-in, which isn't really new, but it's new as of two years ago. You can ask those two additional questions. So the answers would be documented right here, check-in notes. So whatever you're asking, and if you need um, someone in the office to see that, you can have that display here as an event, I mean, as a column. Permanent documents expired. So if you have IDs that have expired, if you're capturing driver's licenses and they've expired, you can have it show up this way. Or even if it's beyond, not even not even a driver's license, it can be anything with an expiration date that you record in the permanent upload section. You know, which is right. For those that may not be doing this, I'll do it real quick. So this expiration date right here. So this could be anything. It doesn't have to be an ID, it can be anything. So if it's expired, you can have it show up if you have this column displaying and that's this is what it means with the uh, the X there, that icon. And actually, I think if I click on that link, it takes me right to that page, which I could have done a little quicker. Uh, event permanent note, that is right here. So if you have any event permanent notes, it'll display in the event. And again, these are all set up in admin. Uh, next, we have user overview. So my user overview is right here. And we did some name changes just to clean this up. So as you know, it always said, you have eight new assigned tasks or you have two new messages. So I figured out, do we really need to keep saying you have? Um, or do we, can we just clean it up and just get to the point and say assign tasks, messages, appointments, and work schedule? And that's what we did. So it just cleaned it up, makes it easier to follow, I think, especially for new hires, that they can easily see what's going on here. Um, my assigned tasks, you can now filter these by business type. So it's going to default to all business types. So right here. And I can switch over to say just payroll, hit apply. And now I just focus in on this business type and it'll stay this way too. You have to actually change it back. So here's all business types back. Go back to my home page. Messages. Uh, we kind of were forced into a new spell checker. So how it works, nothing fancy. Um, if I say, Adam is a good boy. So now it will underline it here. And if it has a select, you right click, it'll kind of tell you what it wants you to select. So that's the new, it's pretty much the same thing. It just, um, it underlines the words it thinks are misspelled and then you right click and then it'll give you the correct spelling. Uh, my appointments. So some of you wanted to export your appointments to Excel. So then we just added the little export to Excel. So you would just select them, hit export to Excel, and then now your appointments would be in your Excel spreadsheet. Office communications, moving to the right here on the home page. Um, as you can see, we changed names here. One is office communications. You're like, what is that? So it was office overview. Now we change it to office communications because it made more sense because this is all forms of basically incoming communications from your clients or your prospects. 
so it made more sense. Um, then we cleaned it up again instead of saying you have two new unassigned portal messages or you have five new unassigned Twilio messages. We decided why do we need to say you have? Let's just cut to the chase and say uh, put the headings right here: client portal, text, email, voice. And I'll get to the voice in a second. So it makes again, I think it's going to make it easier for your new hires that aren't used to Adam. Um, it's, it's really clean and easy to see. It's going to take you a day or two to get used to it, and then you're going to say, "Oh, this is much easier to read." Um, okay, Twilio message table. So we just added the time zone. So you may not want to send a text to somebody over if you're on the East Coast to the West Coast, you know, before they wake up. So it shows the time zone in here, and that's coming in from your the contact information inside the client file where you have that recorded. Uh, voice, I'm going to flip over here to show you the voice. Again, if you're not using Adam's phone system, then voice will not be display. So this is just going to tell you how many calls for the day. So you can easily see it right on your home page. So as of today, we took 12 phone calls, 11 were incoming, one outgoing, and zero missed. So that's good, no missed calls today. And then all I do is click on this and that shoots me right in back into my current day, actually, now it's my current day call log. So here we go right here. So Ethan took two, Kira seven, and Jared three, inbound, outbound. Just great information to have, and it's very simple to retrieve. No reports to run, just click. Um, I don't know if you currently have that with your current phone system or not. So, um, okay, that's my voice. Moving on to page seven. Office tasks, new. All right, so you guys may have already saw this. Like, what is this down here? Office tasks. So, again, you have to turn this on. Um, when, you, when we update your software, you will not see this. So that would be something you would turn on and the setup is right there in admin. Um, and it's by user. So if you don't want everyone to see this. So this is gonna be your office task for all your business types. So you got everything in one place. So if you're doing payroll, bookkeeping, tax prep, resolution, you know, the only way you could see what's really was, was due is by clicking through your business types, which can be a little time consuming and maybe you forgot. Now this is gonna put it all on the homepage so you can see all your tasks that are due today or past due. Um, and that's for the office. So that would be all your employees. And then again, you can filter this by, by business type too. So if you only wanna focus in on payroll, you can do that. So that's, you know, this again, every, hopefully these will help you not, things won't slip through the cracks. So if they have due dates on them, you know, they're gonna show up on the homepage if you choose to. Again, you don't have to put this on there. And just to give you a heads up, when we added this to our tax office, I think we had um, like 176,000 past due tasks, okay? I'm assuming you guys will have maybe not that many, but you're gonna have a lot of tasks. You're gonna see this page is gonna be huge. And the reason that is probably, at least for us, it was because we were using the checklist, event checklist, and we weren't closing them out. Okay, so it took a while to clean it up, so if you're going to use this, you're going to have to have somebody clean it up, I'm guessing. Okay, so just be aware that's what it is. But because now we have the paging feature, you don't have to worry about the page timing out anymore. You'll have 250 records per page. It's just going to take someone a little bit of time to clean it up. Um, Drake Crosslink Data Import. This button, now we just, we just made it stand out more clear. So, and it's blue. So it matches our software. Drake Data Global Import. Again, the global means you're when you click it, and this is only for Drake and Crosslink users, it's it's importing globally all your records, not just individual. And I'm going to show you where the individual ones is if you don't know that. It's inside the client file. That's why we're identifying it as global. Uh, and we place next. We have on the same page seven here, search. We go to a search. John Casey, and when I select add, so I'm gonna add a new year, my pop-up box, it's pre-filling the account user, Mark, and that's because I have Mark as a requested user for this client. So before it was just blank. So a lot of you guys said, hey, let's just make it automatically pre-fill, made sense, so we did it. 
um, punch clock. Switch back here, my punch clock, my in-out board. So obviously the in-out board tells you who punched in, who punched out, which is valuable information. But now if you're using Adam's phone system, um, also a nice thing to know, again, just like I clicked on the user page, I can see who's available to take calls, but this way, so say if I saw someone unavailable on my user page, but I'm like, well, I don't even know, are they unavailable because they're not even working? So punch clock made more sense. So we actually added that to the user page and then we decided it makes more sense to put on the punch clock because our employees punch in and out. So now I can easily see who's actually working and if they're available to take a call. So, and again, I don't want to get into the details on Adam's phone system, but everyone really should be as transfer only. So then I can actually at least transfer a call to them or I can intercom them. So Levi here, unavailable, that's not good. That means I cannot communicate with him via the phone. Um, so we always want to make sure everyone's least transfer only and then available means she can take the incoming call. And if it was on a call, it would highlight in yellow meaning she's on a call. So that's all we added to the punch clock. It's, it is, uh, I go to it all the time because obviously we're using the phone system. Um, all right, moving on to page eight. And I hate giving a plug to the phone system all the time, but again, the, the, whole, the whole reason Adam is here is, and the reason you probably bought it is because you wanted to put everything in one place. And this is just another application. The phone is another application. Now it was a huge monster to tackle, let me tell you that, but we did it and we put it into Adam. And so that's, everything's linked up. Okay, uh, appointments. So we have what we call tag clients. And what that means when I click on John here, and right underneath his name, tagged, I can tag it with any different color I want. So if I wanna make it white, just cause it's easy to stand out, and then I save it. So now it, it's basically just color code. I already have colors already. If you see up here, my business types are already color coding the, um, the calendar. If you wanna make things stand out with a different color for whatever reason, um, maybe cause you're going, to visit their house or something. So you have a specific color just so you can visually identify what, what's going on tagged with those clients. So it's an easy way to do it. And then over here, we're actually even tracking the numbers. So it's in, the, in our summary box now, tag clients zero one. Of course, the zero means they haven't come in yet. Um, and then to get rid of this, just open this back up. And if I click back in the tagged field and then you see the little red squiggly, Go like that, highlight it, then select delete on your keypad and then save. And now you're back to normal. Um, okay, so I'm about changing filter and defaults based on user's last selection. We're up there under appointment, still page eight. What that means is, so right now I'm selected as all employees. So I see everybody on my appointment calendar. If all I wanna do is focus on mine, like I could care less about the rest of the staff because I don't book appointments for other staff, then I might just wanna look at myself every all the time. So here I have Mark. So now when I go out of Mark, it doesn't refresh. So when I go back here to appointments, it stays whatever my last selection was. Whereas before it always went back to showing all users. Same way with over here day, week or month. So if I wanna look at my week and I leave and now I come back, it's gonna to default to my last selection. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it back just to get back to where I was. So that would be helpful, I think, for those that don't need to see the whole office. Um, work schedule. You can now, if you're using our work schedule, you can verify by the week as opposed to having to do daily. Now you can just verify the week at a shot. So that should help help, help the process there if those are using the work schedule. File information, again, we're on page eight at the bottom. So Baxter here, James. All right, so we added inside the contact information section up here at the top, we added the call log. So this is a call log for um, James here as an individual. So I can see how many calls does James make to me or to the office 
you know, in a calendar year. So in this example, calendar year 2021, we've had 205 calls with James. Okay, so you know there are people that you talk to a lot and you feel like I should be billing that person more because I'm on the phone with them all the time. But you probably don't actually know how many times you're on the phone. Now with Adam, you will know how many times you're on the phone with them and how long you're on the time, how long you're on the call. So 205 calls, 80 inbound, 94 outbound, 31 missed. Here's my durations and we're able to add billable amount to it. So you can control that in admin and set up what you think should be a dollar amount by user. So the owner might be more, should be more valuable than you know a support staff person for billable time just to make sure you're actually charging this person appropriately. So that's all gonna be tracked and you can easily see that. And I can also click on any of these links. It's gonna show me every single call. If I dig in to see who was actually on that call with that person, I click the eyeball, that's gonna show me. So Marcella, she was on with you know exactly the date, the time, and this is her, the billing rate for her. And this is the, the amount that gets calculated and added in here. So all the details is all summarized in here in these tables. Very easy to access and quickly. Um, next we have in the contact information section, we have email. I believe I'm gonna stay in the same one under email here. And I think I'm gonna switch over to maybe John here, all right. Um, I'm just reading my notes, sorry about that. So an email, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead here. Email to SMS discontinued. Okay, let me get back, sorry about that. Back to client. What that means is for those of you that have been using Adam um, for texting, but not using Twi the service of Twilio, the integration of Twilio, you're just using the the SMS providers, um, like if you can email, you could email out of Adam and it would go to someone's phone as a text, but it's really an email. You're just kind of tricking the system. So that's why you had to have the cell phone providers um, little extension. So an example here, I have um, xtext at vtex, vtext.com. That was for Verizon. That was allow we were able to do that. You know, we did that. We started that whole thing many, many, many years ago before we had the integration with Twilio. So we've had the integration with Twilio for texting, both incoming and outgoing, which is beautiful and it's so much more reliable. So we just unfortunately can't support that old system anymore using cell phone providers. So hopefully there's not too many of you out there, um, but that's being discontinued. So on the new version you're gonna be receiving, it will not work anymore. So I want you to be aware of that because if you're relying on it, you either need to stop relying on it or please switch over to Twilio. It's very inexpensive. Um, we know so much more about it now than we did like six, seven years ago. You can use your same office phone number as your texting number. So before we had to actually pick a cell phone number, I mean, pick a number that was strictly for texting. Now you can actually use any number you want, including your own. So it makes it even more valuable. So, and it's, the cost is so minimal. It's a dollar a month for a phone number and it's like half a penny for a text. Most of you are gonna spend under a hundred dollars for this service and it's so much better than what you were doing. And then on top of that, you can now on your homepage, you can actually see incoming texts. People can communicate with you as opposed to just doing all outgoing texts. So hopefully, you guys will sign up with Twilio just because um, it's just gonna provide so much better customer service for you and it's very inexpensive. So if you're interested, I have a link in here that gives you more information about that and also call you know, call our support staff and we will help you get set up with that. Um, permanent documents. So now you can any uploads, this is just a permanent documents, you can download them as a zip file, so you can clean this up. So if I have, right here I have what, five documents, I just check the box here, download a zip, it creates a zip file for me. It's actually doing this on my workstation C drive. I browse, 
and this is where it, it gets stored under Workstation 106. There it is labeled Client Files. Double click it, it's gonna then zip it. Now I can go ahead and call it whatever I want. And I'll label it zip. And then I save it. And now I still have these checked. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those records because now they're all stored just in one zip file. And now when I click on, I'm gonna clear this out right here. When I click on this to view them, They're gonna all pop up here. Now they're popping up on my C drive here, just so you know that. But then I can actually, if I wanna view them all, I can just go ahead and select them all and I can right click and say open and they will all open at the same time and not in one PDF, but in five PDFs, but they're all open at the same time. So hopefully this will work for you guys. I mean, it's gonna clean up so you can store everything in just one zip folder. So it'll be nice inside you know, the client's file here. Um, and then to retrieve them, you just click on here and then it's gonna just download it to your C drive so you can delete it off of there. But that's how the zip feature works. Um, moving on to page nine, client portal messages. And I'm gonna switch over here to John Casey. He has more portal messages, client portal message. So we have a, um, a little summary table. We've done this with all the forms of communication, texting, email, portal messages. So we can quickly see how many messages we have and it's all based on calendar year. So at 19 messages for the year, I have one open. That's this one right here where it says he electronically signed. I have received 11 and I sent seven and we have one automatic notification, probably telling him I uploaded a document or something. And then again, we're tracking billable. So I introduced to you the billable amount we're tracking based on calls, okay? And at the time I was thinking, I really wanna spend how much time I spend on calls, but I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm texting them all the time. I'm portal messaging all the time. I'm emailing them all the time. What about all that time I'm spending? Why would I not wanna track that for billable time, right? And I know there's a lot of you guys that are using Adam to track billable time using the punch clock. That's still exactly the same, okay? that That is more accurate than what I'm talking about now, except for calls. Now calls, you know, that's second for second, okay, tracking. <clears throat> but that's different. This is just a way of tracking um, things without actually having to do any extra effort. So what you guys have been doing with the billable punch clock is you actually have to manually record that time. This is just automatically being recorded. Um, it's, it's very simple and it just kind of gives you an idea of how much, how much you should be billing them without doing any extra effort. That's kind of what it's designed for. So uh, right here, I'm only, I've only built it in, the billable portion is built in for messages I'm sending. So I'm creating a message or I'm replying to them. So that's where I'm putting more effort into it. Obviously I'm not gonna bill them for an automatic notification. I'm not gonna track that or something um, I received. Now granted, I could take some time reading it. So maybe I should put that, you know, tie that into, but as of right now, it's designed just for sending messages out. So if I were to go ahead and um, compose a message, so I'd say, um, hello, in admin, in the company page, I've defaulted that all portal messages are gonna default to 10 minutes of billable time. Okay, you can change that to whatever you want. You can not even use this. Okay, this is up to you. This is just something, if you wanna keep track of it, you can, because I know in my tax business, I feel like I'm there's some people taking advantage of me. Okay, and I'm, um, spending way too much time on specific clients based on what I'm billing them, all right? That's why I designed this. And I'm sure I'm not alone. There's, you guys are doing exactly the same team. So it's an, it's an easy way of tracking this to see if, are you billing them appropriately? Hopefully this will actually generate more revenue for you um, because now you have some backup as to why you're billing them what you are. So, okay, so I have 10 minutes here, I just say, Hi, John, now that was pretty quick. I can override this and just say, let's just say that I think that was only five minutes or maybe I don't even wanna do anything, but I'm just gonna say five. And then I hit send. So that goes out now. So now I have, um, well, there's eight cent. So I click on this, this is one hello. So here it is right here. Based on what I thought was my billable rate per hour, it's, this is worth $6.25. So that's being added to the total. 
So it's just automatic, everything's automatic, and I can even edit these if I want. So if you really are gonna use this, you can actually go in here and change the time. Say if I want this is, you know, I actually spent 60 minutes on that thing. I wanna keep track of this. So now I'm up to 156.22. So that is how um, the portal message works. Um, and it, it works exactly the same way as email and text. Um, I forgot, I, point, I missed one, the very top bullet there, jumped right to this thing. Um, automatic out of office replies. So because we're using portal messages so much and clients are relying on us to respond quickly to them, um, but sometimes we're out of the office because of vacations or um, holidays or whatnot, you can now create an automatic reply to them. So if somebody sends you a message asking a question or whatever, they send it to you, they're gonna automatically get a portal message reply back to them saying that you're out of the office, you'll get back to them on whatever day you want. You customize that, you build that, that's all done in admin under the predefined client portal messages. And there's a checkbox that just says, this is an automatic reply. So you'll turn that on and turn it off when you want to. So we've used it for Thanksgiving, 4th of July. Um, just, you know, it's just again, keep in contact with your clients, let them know what's going on in your office. So keep the communications open, better customer service. So obviously you've been probably been doing that with your email all along, like if you use Outlook or Gmail, now it's um, because you're relying on Adam so much, now you can do it with Adam. All right, email messages. Um, let's switch over to email. Everything's the same way here. So I got 20 automatic notifications, one cent. You know, the billable, it works exactly the same way as I just described with the um, client portal. The new things with, um, and again, email has automatic out of office replies. So that is gonna be set up for you. And if you're using, a lot of you are just using Adam's email for outgoing. If you're also using it for incoming, this is where, you know, where people actually can send you an email um, and not everyone is using it. So the out of office reply obviously wouldn't matter for you. If you're interested in using um, the email for, communicating back and forth with your clients um, so they can reply back to you and you can just communicate that way and everything's documented in their file. That service is tied in with SendGrid. Um, we introduced that a couple years ago. And again, there is an additional fee to get that with that integration that we, we created with SendGrid. So that's $100 per year. So I just, I'm just pointing these things out because we're using it in our tax office and it's very valuable. Um, and so we're continually to make enhancements with it. So I have to go over these enhancements with you because many of you are using it. Those that aren't, obviously it's a mute point, but I encourage you to use everything Adam can do for you because it just makes your office work so much better. Okay, so the billable time, everything the same, block incoming emails. So now you can actually block people. Um, you do that in admin. So if people are sending you scam or spam, um, you can block that. Carbon copy CC email. So if you want to carbon copy someone, one is you can receive. So if someone were to send an email to you and they um, carbon copy one of your clients along with it, because I, I usually get a one of my. Um, uh, now he's not. They're not a client, um, but they send referrals to me, and they're a financial person. But he always CCs their client in. Well, when he was doing using our email system, I'm like, oh, I can't even see that person's email. So now I can, because incoming carbon copy emails will, I'll see those when they come into Adam and also going out now. So if I hit new email, um, I can carbon copy somebody in here too. So if I wanna say, and I can do, I can just type it if I'd like, or I can do a search. So if they're inside my database already, so say Preco search. So now I have Mark Preco and Steve. I just would click on here, pre-fill it in and Steve. So I can then close it out and then I can go ahead and send an email out just like I normally would. Um, but that's the carbon copy. So you can have multiple emails going outside of Adam and also receiving them. You can see multiple, whoever's on sending them all. Um, change name that displays when sending emails. A lot of you guys, I know um, we're signing up and they're, um, you, you know, I know you spent years with, developing your email and so your clients are used to the 
you know, the same email address. And so they're worried that now one coming from Adam, they're not going to know what it is and they're going to think it's spam. Well, so we've made some changes to that. And now you can control the actual, what the recipient sees as the email address coming in. Now it's still going to say, it, it'll say whatever your company name at parse.adamanager.com, but um, most of the times they won't even see that last part, parse.adamanager.com. They just see what you want them to display. And that's all displayed. And I'll show you where you control that. It's in admin, company, <clears throat> and then whatever you put right here for the company name. So whatever you put here, that'll be what's actually displayed when they receive an email from you. So hopefully by doing that, you know, that'll encourage you guys more to use the Adams email. And and even if you're not using, you know, the the Adam, the email that costs the extra hundred dollars, you know, they are receiving emails from you. Like if you upload a document or they're missing information, you know, that's been happening all the time. So anyway, you can adjust the, what they actually see as the company name from you. Date and time sent added to the header. You know, we just added that to the email header. Email log summary, um, which I kind of covered that when I was in John's file. I'm going to go back into his file here because now I think we're going to go into texting. Going on to page 10, we're getting there. We've got 14 pages, had a lot because we didn't have a summer update, just combined them all into one. Uh, prospect messages on page 10 at the top. Uh, all that one, the only thing change we did is now you can have an automatic out of office reply to. So if a prospect sending you a message, and again, it comes in on Adam in the home page. You can reply back automatically saying that you're out of the office. Uh, Twilio message, same thing. Um, out, of, out of office reply. Billable time, it works the same. The only thing different on the Twilio message page, the texting message page, if you're using Twilio, is that we actually have all the text messages display as opposed to just condensing them you know, into the table and then you have to click because typically, um, if you're texting back and forth, you kind of want to see your prior messages before you reply. But everything else is the same, like if open, you know, it highlight in yellow, receive, sent, automatic notifications. In this case, all we had was 20 automatic notifications. Um, so the billable rate is zero because I wasn't charging for automatic notifications. But if I switch over to this other person, Robert Patton, this person bombards me with texts. Okay, 129 between him and I going back and forth. So based on what I put for a billing rate and how much time I think I spent, um, it comes up $236.57 um, is what I think should have been billable based on what I think I'm worth. And then if I actually go into the file, I'm kind of going outside the outline a little bit, I come down and see what did I bill him? Okay, well, I billed him 250, so I'm kind of in line, but I'm not even charging him for my tax prep. That's just strictly communications going back and forth all year long with him asking me questions because he doesn't call me, he just texts me because it's easier. And that's what I prefer him to do because I don't have to, you know, I can answer that anytime I want. Where's the phone? You kind of got to answer it right there and then. Um, so MMS pictures. So if you're sending images or receiving images via text, like if there's, scanning a receipt or something, or I'm not scanning, taking a picture of a receipt and they send it to you. Um, we had a limit of just three images per text that they could actually be received here in Adam. Now we bumped it up to 10. So if they actually send 10 images in one text, you'll be able to see them all here inside of Adam. Move text messages. Um, you Just like you can move everything else, you can select what you want and then just hit move and you can move it to another client file. So if you want to keep things you know, in the right client file, if somehow it was text with someone else's phone or something. And the Twilio log summary, I just went over that. That's that's right here. These are all the same as like the other ones. Okay, moving on to page 11. Account information. And I'm gonna switch back over to John Casey. No, Baxter, I'm gonna be Baxter. Going to my client file here. And the account number. We just increased the limit, nothing major. Just It was at 15 character limit. Now it's up to 50 character limits. If so if you wanna put large account numbers in there, you feel free. Account uploads, this is kind of what I demonstrated with the permanent uploads. So if I have a lot of a 
account uploads in here, which is very typical. So I just, let's download them as a zip. Now I just browse and where did it go? Oh, I'm in account files. So this is named account files instead of client files. And it's got quite a few uploads in there. So it takes a few seconds. And now I can label it, reviewer docs. I can say zip if I want. I can change it to, I could change this to zip file is probably what I would do as an upload type. And again, these are all selected. So I can just go ahead and delete them all. Get rid of all my clutter. One nice zip file. And then if I need to retrieve them, I just click on here and I can see all the documents. So if I had 20 of them in there, I'd see all 20. Okay, add new year business type pop-up box. Go back to my file. I hit add account year. It says add new year right here. It's gonna default, the account user is just gonna to default to the requested user, which is me right here, that's all. Um, add on creation of office events. These are for my people that are using Adam for bookkeeping and payroll. You have a lot of events open all at the same time like this. So when you create a brand new year, you just select add account year. Now all these office events that you set up to automatically create, they're in the same ordering as how you have them displayed inside the client file. Before they were, I don't know how they were ordered, honestly, they were all over the place. So now at least they're in the same order to make it easier for you if you wanna unselect them so you know where to find them. Um, referral pop-up box, only change on that, we weren't, aware of this, but the refer friend letter, which you can customize under report permissions, it wasn't actually allowing you to customize it in here on this pop-up box. It was only on the main reports. Now, it, whatever you customize in admin under report permissions, it'll automatically also customize right here for refer friend letter. Um, office events, Mark is done. This button here, we just added another button. It was right down here just to make it easier when you have a lot of events. You can mark as done up here or down. Nothing major. I'm getting to something major, so don't fall asleep on me. And we're right here now. Transaction information. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to John Casey here. All right, so authorized.net transactions. Um, if you use, if you're using, um, if you're processing credit cards, you know, through Adam or eChecks. So once you process the payment, it automatically records it here, as you know. Uh, you can no longer delete that transaction. Okay, so you can edit it, but you cannot delete the delete trash. Trash can will not display. So if you process a payment through eChecks or credit card. Credit card processing fee. So we talked about that on the client portal. It works exactly the same way. So if I were to click on pay with credit card, right here's my 3% charge that, I'm, that I set up in admin. So my total fee is 103. When I go ahead and process this payment, it will automatically record a line item saying credit card process. I think the, uh, um, the note would say credit card processing fee and it'd be the $3 and then the total payment would be 103. So that is how that works. Uh, Multi-year transaction. This is the one I think is really cool. All right, so I'm not sure how your offices have been handling multiple year transactions. So say the parent comes in, does two kids returns also, um, but they only wanna just pay with one, say one check. All right, so then how do you do that and still have a trail of who has the fees? Do you lump them all in one year, which I don't think is the best way to do it, or do you each record a fee in each year or each client file um, and then kind of then roll it into one because the parent was making the payment? Well, it was kind of time consuming and I didn't even enjoy doing it. Now you don't have to worry about that anymore. So you can record the fees in each person's file so then you know what you, you know, charge them appropriately. Then when you go to make one payment for multiple records, this is how it works. So I hit um, and I'm gonna do it first by credit card. And I'm gonna show, it also works for credit card, e-check, and then even if you're just paying with, if they're paying with cash or check. So I hit pay with credit card. And right here it says multiple year payment. 
this is going to display in this table any client file that's linked to mine. Okay, so I'm in John Casey's file right now, but Family Barbershop and Robert Patton are also linked and they have a balance due. So it's gonna show me, and they have different years. So Family Barbershop owes 170 for 16 and 21. John Casey owes for 18, 20, and then, and then Robert Patton, 20. So if I select them all, whoops, it's gonna show a grand total of $612.85 with my credit card processing fee for all three of them, all three clients. If I go ahead and process this, hit send payment, it'll automatically record the payment in each one of their files. And it'll then put this note in there so it knows it was a multiple year transaction. So the lump sum um, is 612.85, but it's all broken out individually. So I think that's pretty cool and it's gonna make our life a lot easier, whoever's taking the payments. Well, actually it'll be both ways. The people who recorded the fees used to have to then do an adjustment and then put it in the, say the parents file, if that's how we're you know doing with the parents paying for the kids returns. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So then I can just um, unselect. I go back. I'm gonna go this now and show you how it works for e-check also, exactly the same thing. Just click this multi-payment and I can actually pick and choose which one. So say I only wanna do two, so my fee is 295. Pick another one, now I'm up to 395. So you don't have to add anything in your head. You know, it's all done for you. And then just hit send payment, it'll automatically record the payment in these individual files based on what I checked. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I'm gonna demonstrate this. I just didn't, I didn't have a, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now with my add transaction. All right, so now I'm gonna hit multi-year transaction and I'm gonna select them all, except I'm gonna, and it says 595. I'm gonna unselect Robert Patton here. And now I'm gonna say they paid with a check. Okay, and see, here's all my notes right here displaying. And I just hit save and close. So I have um, now the payment, cause this only, he owed me a hundred dollars right here. So now it's check, but it's, and now the check's gonna be say for the total amount, which is 565, but it's broken out between all three of these. So now if I go to, um, let's see if I go to John KC 19. Is that the one? No, which one did, which, let me see. Family Barbershop. Okay, I know he had a balance too on there, Family Barbershop. So what year was that that he paid? Um, hold on one second. I'm gonna find this one second. Okay, I actually had to stop the recording here because I couldn't remember where I recorded it. So I had to look at my notes here. So Family Barbershop was 2016 that the payment, that it showed a balance due. So now there's 170, again, check, and here's all my notes related to. So that's how the multi-year, transaction works. Um, like I said, I think it's gonna be a huge time saver that you can record one payment for multiple records at the same time. Okay, EF database. Oh, no, I'm sorry, sort by column. This is no big deal. You can just click on here and it sorts now by column, whichever one you wanna do. Um, EF database. So let me get back to and John, okay, EF database here. For those of you that were, um, I know this happened with Drake, I'm not sure if it happened with Crosslink, but now that we can e-file amendments um, and we're doing bank products, we had a problem where the balance wasn't clearing out. So what that person, if that person paid me already through the bank product, but then I did an amendment, then it showed they owed me money again. We fixed that problem. So if you're e-filing amendments and doing bank products and you're using Drake, and I believe this will work with Crosslink too. You don't have to worry about that issue anymore. Uh, the button right here, Drake EF data individual import. So that's what I was talking about. We've been talking about global import. And I don't know if you're aware of this. Well, one, it was just a link. Now it's a button to stand out more. But if you ever need to get EF records um, just for that individual, like for some reason it didn't pull in globally, all you do is select this and then run the import and then it would then populate anything, the latest data just for that individual. And again, this is just for a Drake or Crosslink users. Um, all accounts, scroll down here. And I'm gonna switch over to Baxter. Uh, 
Okay, so all accounts right here we have. So now it used to say other accounts. Now it shows all accounts because the current year is also displaying here and it's highlighted in yellow. So the highlighting in yellow will, will indicate what year you're actually in. So if I hit to show everything, and I go to my 2016. So I'm in 2016 right here, James Baxter 2016. And then it highlights right here so I know which one I'm in. So it's just all accounts instead of other accounts. So the current year is actually in there. Um, billable amount we've added now. So the client tax summary that we were showing, oh, right up here. Actually, I don't know, I may have skipped over this. The contact summary. Oh, this is an important one too. I skipped this in the contact information section. So the contact summary is actually going to display a breakout of all the communications with the client. So the calls, the emails, the events, the portal messages, and then it puts a billable amount with each one. So in this case for 2021, it's showing based on the communication and the events <clears throat> and the billable rate, $558.17 is what um, my billable rate should be. And then I can go ahead and compare that to uh, what I actually recorded in my transaction section. So going back down here in my all accounts under billable, I have an amount field right here too. So say if I were to go to 2016, I select this. This is just a dollar amount coming from that contact summary page. So $212.50, I can compare it to what I actually billed them for. Oh, I got 227.10. So that's where that information's coming from. So it's a combination of all the different communications if I put a billable amount with that. So I hope that's not too confusing. Um, and I apologize, I didn't cover that that contact summary up there. Um, now moving to page 13, link client. So at the bottom here, the link client, now we just added the client balance for your link client. So you can see this Robert Patton still owed me $30. Looks like I got a credit balance of 25 with Family Barbershop. Quick menu bar. The contact summary, what I was just talking about, which is up here. I also made it quick where you can access it from the quick link sum or the quick link, just in case you're in the transaction sections and you want to see, hey, am I billing them appropriately? I can see, you know, all my calls, all my emails, my events, my portal messages, my Twilio message, and here's my total, just in case my tax software says one thing, but based on how much time I've spent on this client, it says another, and then I might wanna adjust it and add more to it. And I can link either back to my contact information or to my transactions. So I felt the information I'll probably be pulling up when I'm actually recording their fee to make sure I'm billing them appropriately. So if they're constantly calling me over the summer and now I'm into the new year, I might have to bill them a little more because I had so much contact with them over the prior year but you'll have all that documented um, based on, of course, if you're using all the forms of communications that Adam allows you with the email, the text, and the phone, and the portal messages, then you have that information available to you. Uh, in admin here, now page 13 under admin, client batch update. So we think this is gonna be a, a really, big winner for those that don't use Drake, Crosslink, and TaxWise because those we have, you know, kind of automatic imports of the contact data. But we never had anything for our other users like ProSeries, Lacert, AlterTax, ATX. Um, so in order, and then you guys were either, one, you weren't keeping your Atom current with the, the client's contact information, you know, and you may have been relying on the tax software, you know, which is fine, but now you can actually easily import your tax contact data for the clients into Adam. So then now you can be 
up to date in both places and you don't have to do dual entry. So your phone numbers, your emails, your mailing address, your spouse's information, all that can be imported into Atom. Now the key is they have to be already in Atom. They have to be an existing client in Atom. Okay, so it's not gonna just take any client in your current tax software and then automatically put them in Atom. That's not gonna happen. Um, we just feel that's gonna, it would cause more problems than it would solve. So they have to be an existing client. So it's basically all it's gonna do is up, keep your client's contact data current with your tax software. Or if you're updating them from another, it doesn't have to be your tax software. We just assume there's probably gonna be an export out of your tax software. So it has to be, and then we have a video on this for a help video, but basically it has to be in the same format as our templates. Um, now, also it might be helpful for say our Drake um, and Crosslink users, because right now spousal information does not import when we just click that button, like the spouse phone number, email address, that does not come forward. Date of birth does, okay, um, you know, in the name that populates, but we don't get their contact information. So you may be able to use this to update the spousal emails and phone numbers um, without actually have to manually do it. So I hope this is gonna be really beneficial for you guys to keep things current in your Atom software. Event status, we just added 48 additional office events and they were the, uh, we duplicated the ones called miscellaneous event due date. Predefined messages, uh, we just added nothing major here. All we did is add, um, the little expand and collapse to make your note, if you have notes in here to make it easier to read them and condense it. Upload types, um, again, nothing major here. Uh, we just added, if you make an upload type and you want the predefined note, you can, if you check the box display on all types, it'll then now display for every single upload type. So other, which is very generic, you could do that very quickly. Moving on to our last page, page 14, bookkeeping, transaction entries, we just added, that's a report, invoice number, and then modified by. Uh, the management balance due invoice, we increased the spacing just to prevent wrapping. Management permanent notes, display the client permanent notes. Um, that's a brand new report, so you can run that to get all your permanent notes, uh, maybe clean some things up, <clears throat> that maybe shouldn't be a permanent note. And then the mailer's client export, we added two new columns, client retention, and then client files with restricted user access. That's something that you guys do in the contact information section where you can pick certain people, certain users have access to the that client. And that is all I had. I know this was a long one, um, but it's because we had so many updates because we just did one big one instead of breaking it out into two separate ones. Uh, again, I appreciate all your support and all your suggestions. Um, we did make a lot of your suggestions and we continue to do so. It's just we run out of time, so we, we can't get them all in. But, you know, tax season's right around the corner and then we'll probably start this whole process up again in the spring um, to keep making Adam better and better. So I appreciate everything you've done. I hope everyone has a very successful tax season. Hopefully these changes will help make things more efficient in your office so you don't have to work as hard, but continue to make more money. And I hope everyone stays safe and I'll talk to you next year.